Today we are joined by hisandhermoney.com. How are you guys? We're great. We're doing great. great. We're happy to be here. Yes. So Ty and Talit, is that correct? You got it right. Good job. See, I feel for you because having Tara, no one can say my name. We're right there. We're right there. They mispronounced mine as well, though. <laughs> so today we want to talk about some tips to get out of debt. And you guys have a great website. I've been through it. I've listened to some of your podcasts. I've really enjoyed some of your tips because they're so practical. I mean, I feel like we're talking to ourselves kind of because <laughs> it's great when great minds think alike, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so we would like to know some of your top tips. Maybe tell us a little bit about your story to start with. So we can get a little bit of background and then we'll maybe go into the tips if um, one of you guys want to give us a heads up on your story here. Sure, sure. Well, we were high school sweethearts Aww. and um, as you mentioned, we currently run a site called hisandhermoney.com and uh, the gist of our site is pretty much, it, it basically started from our story. Um, prior to marriage, my husband was awful with money, had bad credit. I'm with you, man. You know, uh, bad credit, uh, his credit score was in the dumps, you name it. And I, on the other hand, had a great credit, a wonderful credit score, no debt whatsoever, paid myself, paid my way through college, and then we fell in love and said, okay, let's get married. <laughs> and so, can you imagine uh, the dynamite that that was? It was like a boom, you know, when we got married to try to blend both um, spending styles because he's the spender, I'm the saver. And as, as I said, he had the debt and I didn't have the debt. And so we got married and we went on a journey of trying to knock out our debt. And we knocked off, knocked out about $30,000 in our first year of marriage. And that was a lot of hard work um, doing that. Uh, we pretty much sacrificed a lot. Um, during that time, but we were eager and we were both on the same page to get out of debt. So that's pretty much the gist of how and why his and her money dot com got started. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add any? And you know, a little little small piece of the story that my wife left out was at the point that we were getting married. Okay. You know, my my behavior had changed. I was learning a lot about how money worked, and I was doing a lot of things with more common sense than I was before. But unfortunately, my previous ways still had their consequences. And I had over $30,000 of debt that I had accumulated. And I decided that I wasn't going to tell my fiance at the time about this debt because I was so worried that she would run yeah. in the other direction. Because like she said, she paid her way through college all on her own. Mm -hmm. And not only did she pay her way through college, but she graduated with a finance degree. Mm -hmm. And she was working in one of the premier financial institutions in the world. So yeah. this girl knew her money. And I had all this debt. And I was like, there's no way I can tell her about this. And so I decided that I was going to try and fix the situation on my own. I went out, got a second job, got a third job, tried to hustle my way through it. But in the end, it just wasn't going to work. You know, you can't really build a marriage on the foundation of a lie. So it got to the point a couple of months before we were to get married where it had to come out. I had to confess. I had to tell her what was going on. And she had to make the decision whether to stay or whether to go. And through a whole lot of prayer and seeking the Lord and seeking guidance, we made the decision to continue to move forward. And it became not my debt. It became our debt. And we became debt free together in the first year of our marriage. Wow. That is, awesome. that is so cool. <laughs> I love to hear that because, you know, it's amazing how many people hide their debt from their spouse. And or just keep their money separate. Just yeah. yeah. I we do not believe that you should keep your money separate if you're married. Um, honestly I don't, that either. I don't know of any I mean there's maybe in the exception. Somebody will, I'm sure somebody will email me and tell me the exception, but you know, there's really I can't think of any reason why you should keep your money separate you're together you're supposed to be working together you can't work together if you're keeping everything hidden and separate and that kind of thing when you get married so she actually decided to go ahead and marry you huh i she, did. She did yeah I, I i did and i tell people all the time um that i don't believe that you should make a decision whether or not to marry someone because they had debt and maybe they made mistakes 
what I did do was I stepped back from the situation, although I was extremely hurt because what marriage is built on trust and I felt like the trust was not there. Um, but I had to like step back and take a look and I saw this great man of God. I saw someone that was um, a hustler. He was a hard worker. Okay. Yeah. So when I say hustler, that meant he, he, was, he was not a bum. Like he wasn't living at home with his parents, like just mooching off of them. No, he was trying to make um, changes. And it's like, I just thought when I saw him working the second and third job, I just thought he was just stacking the money in a savings account for us. I'm like, yes! <laughs> I had no idea that he was trying to pay off this debt. And so um, I saw that he was an extremely hard worker. Um, and although he made a mistake by not being forthcoming, not telling me everything, I knew that we were able to um, work past it with a lot of prayer. Um, we, we talked a lot about it, so we didn't make a rush decision. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember it was long hours of conversations and what can we do differently? How will we make changes? And then, yeah, and then we just said, you know what, we're going to just do it together. And if we, and I often think about if we did not stay together, we would not be able to help the people that we're helping now today with our platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I, I recognize that. And some of your listeners, you know, they may be in a situation where maybe it seems tough or it seems, you know, just impossible to overcome, you know, and I, I just want to encourage them just to stay the course, pray. Our faith is huge. We're Christians. We believe in, in, in Jesus Christ, our savior, you know, but our faith was big and that's something that got us through this, mm -hmm. you know, and so don't lose hope. Don't lose sight because you're going to have a story at the end. You don't always know it in the beginning, but in the end, it will all make sense. So, yeah. yeah, it's That's funny awesome. how that works out, isn't it? It's so cool to yeah. see. In the end, it's great to see it. When you're going through it, yes, you're not it's thinking tough. That. Yeah. I was ready to call the wedding off. Trust me, it was not about the dress for me, reception. I didn't care. I was going to have to call the guest. I did not care. I would have called that wedding off. Do you hear me? Yeah. But um, I, I, I realized that, no, we didn't need to do that. And I'm so grateful because, boy, he just, he worked extremely hard. And I must say that even during the marriage, and now 10 years later, we've been married for 10 years, I have never once brought it up in his face or threw it up in his face of what he did in his past. Yeah. Once we decided to, you know, move past it, that's exactly what we did, and we got out of debt. Yeah, that's good. And, you know, you did bring up a point how it wasn't about the dress for you. Just in case oh. somebody happens to be listening who's engaged right now in that situation yeah. and they're kind of wondering, should I call off the wedding or not? If you have any doubts, don't go through with it. Absolutely. I have had, I, I can count probably on both hands, friends who had doubts and they went through with it and mm -hmm. they shouldn't have gotten married. Yes. And, you know, I think it's really good the way you guys took your time to think about it, you know, pray about it. But really, if you're in that situation, it is a lot cheaper to to Absolutely. call off a wedding. Or just pause for a while. Yeah. Yes. Than to go through a divorce or Absolutely. marriage counseling. <laughs> that's know? so true. A Absolutely. And that's something that we highly recommend is everyone um, go through premarital counseling. And that's yeah. something that we did with our pastor. So. And we were engaged for two and a half years, so we weren't trying to rush down the aisle yeah. to get married. We really, really thought about it and, uh, you know, uh, talked about it. And it was just three months prior to the wedding was when all of this came out. And as again, as, as I mentioned, it was tough. Um, we talked about it. We prayed about it. And we were able to move past. But absolutely, if you have any doubt whatsoever, if you're seeing signs. Now, if I would have saw signs that my husband was saying one thing but doing another, his actions did not line up then trust me, you, there would have not have been a wedding. If I saw that he was being wasteful with his money and things like that, and I saw, okay, this is going to be a problem. You know, yeah. what I'm seeing right now, it's just going to magnify once we get married. Well, exactly. Especially since you, you know, you discover things. When you finally do get married, you discover things about that person you didn't you sure know. You sure do. You sure and so do. if you know there's a big problem beforehand, you know you're going to discover That's even so more. True. Yeah. It's going to be so double true. or triple after your marriage. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And I, and I also want to mention in regards to, um, you know, having your money together and things like that. Talon and I, we also agree with that. We don't believe that a husband and wife should have anything separate. You know, when people nope. hear say that, they're like, well, what about your own spending money? Okay, we can do that and we can still have the same account. Well, what about if you want to buy him a gift? Everybody wants to throw that in. Okay, how many yeah. times a year do you have to buy your spouse a gift? Yeah. And technically, it's my money it's your money anyway so it's really not like you're really buying me a gift it's we're buying ourselves a gift <laughs> so i mean there's ways around it you know what i mean we, we pull out cash where he'll be able to go spend it and i'll be able to go spend it so there's ways around it now there are some circumstances or situations because i saw this even in the financial sector 
um, that it made sense for a spouse to have money to the side. I will never forget a story of a, a, a woman. She was um, enduring cancer. She was getting chemotherapy and things like that. Her husband was a big gambler. I mean, he was gambling away her in their entire retirement. So in that case, she would bring her daughter in and they would physically have to sit money to the side, you know, just so they will be able to live. So you have to use common sense yeah. here. You know, like we're not telling you, you know what I mean, to just, you know, join forces with somebody that is completely being wasteful. They're gambling all the money away and you don't have any money to feed the children, no money whatsoever to pay for the bills. You know, you yeah. definitely want to, you know, be smart about it. But for the 95% yeah. of yeah. couples out yeah. there that are married, everybody if should you're be. united in your marriage, you should be united Absolutely. in your finances. Well, and we've had, we had somebody on our show the other day that was saying uh, that she was, she had been married for the second time and uh, her, her husband, his entire income went to pay his truck and his phone and the internet and the internet. For the family and she paid the rest and she said she didn't feel like it was his responsibility to pay for her minor children who were still living at home and and those are the kind of situations where we think if you're going to marry somebody you need to be all in i mean yeah. you're right the debt thing i have heard that before where somebody's got a problem with money in a big way but most of the people that we encounter it's it's just like they're holding out for that day when Someday we're going to get tired of each other and we're going to walk away from this. Yes. And if that's the idea you have, you should never get married. And I, I will that's say, that. yeah, I will say, I did have a friend one time who her husband was being abusive to her. He was physically, verbally abusive, and she was taking money aside to set it aside so that she could leave. That's not the kind of thing we're talking about no. here at all. I just want everybody to know because there are those circumstances where. You're in that kind of situation, and if you're in that situation, I say that that is perfectly fine with me because then you Absolutely. are not united in marriage. Oh, absolutely. You know, when you're in an abusive relationship, that is not a marriage that God created. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, but it's like you said, 95% of the people that come to us aren't in those kinds of situations. And so, yeah, we totally agree with you guys. You need to be on the same page with your money and that kind of thing. So, what? So far, we're loving your story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, what is what? What's the first thing that really? What's the biggest thing I should say that helped you guys get out of debt? What you know, if you'd say it's the one thing that really, really helped, what would you say was the biggest thing to start with? I would say a very healthy hatred that's of what debt. I was say. Yeah. Yeah, that's you true. have to hate your debt. Yeah. The Bible says that the borrower is a slave to the lender. So if you're okay with debt, then technically, biblically speaking, you're saying you're okay with slavery. Exactly. And that doesn't make a Can whole lot say? of sense when you put it in a biblical perspective. So if you don't get to the point to where from a mental standpoint, you hate the fact that you're in debt or you hate the fact that there are so many options that are bombarding you on television, on your smartphone, you scroll through Facebook, there's an ad. They're trying to get you to be shackled in debt. And if you don't develop a hatred for the debt that's currently in your life and for the debt that's trying to be pressed into your life, you're never going to get to your goal of debt freedom. So the first thing you got to do is see debt for what it is. It's detrimental. It's not, it's not helpful. If we are believers, for those of you who are tuned in that are Bible-based believers, the Bible clearly tells you, Old Testament, New Testament, that debt destroys you. Debt is something to avoid at all, at all costs. New Testament says, owe no man nothing but love. So if you owe J.P. Morgan Chase, if you owe Sally Mae, then you're not living up to that biblical standard. And it's time for you to do what you need to do to align yourself with the scriptures. So let's so say that was number one. That's so great. let's say somebody's decided that. Practically, how would be, what would be a good way for them to start? I mean, you said you work two or three jobs, which I personally believe if you are in debt, you need to do whatever you can to get out of debt. And if that means work two or three jobs, then do that. What else practically did you do to get out of debt? Well, one of the first things that we did was that we clearly defined what our why is. Why do we want to get out of debt? You know, we didn't want to just get out of debt just for the sake of getting out of debt, but we 
had to say, okay, why? Tyler wanted to further his education, for one, and he was able to do that for the most part through uh, the military because he was in the military. I knew that there was a possibility that in the future, once we had children, maybe I did want to come home to become a stay-at-home mom. Um, so we knew that there was a possibility we were going to only have one person working outside of the home, bringing in the money. So you have to sit down, especially if you're married, sit down with your spouse and discover what your why is. Everyone's why is going to be different. But we find that if you don't have that why clearly defined, you can easily get distracted while getting out of debt. Mm -hmm. You know, we would put our why in front of us and, and it made the sacrifices that we were making. And um, even some of the compromises that I would say that we were making, it made it a little bit easier um, because we did not lose focus on what our why. Was. And part of developing your why is you sitting down and dreaming. Yep. Man, what would life be like if we didn't have yeah, this. this payment, this payment and this payment? What could we do? Yeah. And you and you actually answer that question and you start to picture what your life could look like Excited. if this debt wasn't in your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that starts to shape the motivation behind why you're getting ready to do what you do. Because there's gonna be times in this journey to debt freedom where you're gonna be a little less than motivated. Yeah. You're not always gonna have high highs. You're not always gonna, you know, have your Dave Ramsey scissors out and just going on crazy, you know, gazelle intensity all the time. Sometimes you're gonna be like, Man, I am tired of this. I do not feel like going to this second job and you're going to need to look back at that why to help you stay motivated to reconfigure your focus so that you know okay this this is this is why I'm going in here right. to this night shift okay okay I can do this and so before you you know have any 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 type of behavior change you need to first shape you need to paint the picture of the life the final destination that you're trying to get to because it's going to help you to stay motivated yeah that's a good idea so inspiring yeah so for we us, we had you guys to tell us that. Yeah. We were. <laughs> Actually, your your slavery thing to me uh, is really meaningful because I think yeah. it, not only is it slavery, but you're volunteering to be the slave yeah. Yeah. in that situation. Oh, true. Yeah. And I think Sign that up. that's a good way to kind of get that fire in the belly to kind of get rid of that debt. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. So when we paid off our debt, we didn't. This was before. Well, not quite. It was right when the internet was starting. Right before and right as the internet was starting. So we didn't have all these cool programs and everything. So we used a paper and pen with a little graph <laughs> that Mike marked out that we went up. But did you guys use a computer program or anything that was, or, you know, a website, something to help you track that to get yeah. out of debt? Well, actually, in the beginning, we, too, used pen and paper. Um, and I would have my different highlighters <laughs> and pink and yellow, remember yeah, that? Yeah. And I would highlight stuff and things like, like that. Just tell me, what, yeah. what, what, what's so, going on? What I don't is know, this? I, I like things to be pretty. And I feel <laughs> like, you know, debt and having to pay for expenses can sometimes be non-pretty. So I thought, okay, I wanted to make my paper pretty. So that's what I did. Um, and then as the time went on, we did, we started to discover online resources. Um, we had like a, remember we had like a CD roll? Yeah, we used, back, back then... Dave Ramsey had like this the budget thing on like a CD, CD ROM that you can buy for like ten bucks or something. You inserted into the computer. Yeah. And, you know, since you know since he's released every dollar, we we use every dollar now. But yeah, we we migrated from the paper to the CD ROM to the online budgeting site. Right. We like the online budgeting because it allows you to go in there and kind of keep up to date. You go and make little um, entries as you spend the money, right. and so you know exactly where you stand. So. You know, technology used yeah. properly can be such a game changer in a positive way for you. Right. And we also like the online as well, too, because you can print mm -hmm. out the budget sheet as well, too. So you can post it so, you yeah. know, both parties can see it. But I also like the idea of being able to um, look back like to, to, at different months. Mm -hmm. So I like that being able to compare the months from month to month and things like that. I love that as well about mm -hmm. the online. Plus, Let's it's see. just less paper. Less yeah. paper. What's the online no, less program? clutter. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm all for less paper and clutter. Yes, you know. But it is nice to have the thing that you can hang on the wall, like you were saying, yes. because yeah. for me, it's all about the visual. I, yeah. I, if I see the visual, I get a concept of, you know, how this really feels to be getting rid of this debt. What yeah. online system do you guys use? Every dollar. Every dollar now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dave Ramsey's um, online okay. software, everydollar.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay. Very so, easy. Very simple. Very and user friendly. It, and it's free which is really nice. They do have a paid um, version as well, too, but we use the free one. It's, it's perfect for us and yeah. very simple, very easy. Yeah, because I know our, our viewers are going to ask that, so I'm like, yeah. okay, got to make sure that was... Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. practically, as, how did you save? When what areas did you 
cut then? I mean, I know you got the second and third job, but what then? And there is a point, you know, where you do one thing I, I wanted to mention for us. You have there's a certain point where you have to earn the extra money. You can mm -hmm. only cut so much. And That's I mean, awesome. we were at the point where we had literally cut everything back and we were having to sell things finally and, and stuff like that for us to get out of debt. But what were the things that you guys cut out of your budget then when you were getting out of debt? What did you what did you keep doing? What did you cut? Personally, I had to make a whole lot of changes just in my behavior. So I would love to buy clothes on the regular, you know, at the mall. I love to buy CDs as soon as they came out. I, I love to go, you know, for me, I went to the barbershop, you know, twice a week, you know, just <laughs> spending, spending, spending. <laughs> and so I had to get rid of all that. You know, that was number one. The, the problem was me. The problem was my behavior. The problem was my mentality. And so the cuts from a personal level was I had to stop spending money frivolously. And of course, that freed up cash right there. Just me stopping myself from having these, these reckless spending ways. There, I mean, there was a time where if it was like the 13th and I knew that a check, a new check was going to be deposited in a couple of days, and if there was cash in my account, I'm trying desperately to figure out how to spend it. Because in my mind, what's the point of having this money in here? There's some more on the way. And so I had to just totally shift my way of thinking and thus change the way I was spending money. So just my personal spending habits, mm -hmm. that was a big cut. Yeah, and another thing that we adopted was um, we, well, actually, you read the book first, The uh, Two Income Track. Yes. By the author. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, who's yeah. now uh, Senator Elizabeth yes. Warren. Warren. Um, and we discovered that it is not smart to live off of two incomes. So if you are married, if you are listening to us right now, do not base your expenses, do not base anything, your home costs anything off of two incomes because anything can happen with one or if not both of your incomes. There was a time during our marriage where we both, both of us was both not, were, not were not working. working. Right. And so that's what we adopted early on in our marriage. We said, okay, let's pay everything out of your check and let's save mine or throw my check towards debt. And so that's what we did. So that meant also, too, we were sitting at home eating. I mean, this is our first year of marriage. Red box. You know, everybody, when it's first, first year of marriage, you're going out to dinner once a week to restaurants. You're going on this many vacation. No, we did. We did a lot of, I remember the um, TV singings. Yep. Remember? We would pull out our TV right stand and have dinner right Probably there. Probably the red box. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And sometimes awesome. it was watching what, like Biggest Loser or something. Yeah, or whatever yeah. was out then um, on Channel 7 or something like that. And that's what we did. And we would just sit and we would dream together. We would talk about our goals. We would talk about, and that's another tip that we're going to get um, into, was another thing that helped us was education. You cannot never learn enough. Yeah. We're still learning. We're We've been still learning for 10 years. Yeah. We're still reading and learning about this stuff because we continue. You got to have a growth mindset. Yeah. You can't be fixed in your mentality like, okay, I was dealt a bad hand. Nobody ever taught me about money. So this is just what it is. That's a fixed mindset, meaning there's no room for growth. You got to develop a growth mindset to the point that, yeah, I'm here. I'm at this place. I don't want to be here. I don't want this debt. I made a bunch of mistakes, but I can learn how to change things. I can figure out a strategy that I can undo some of my wrongs and I can become a better person in the process. So that's why we're so big on educating yourself. Buy, uh, listen to books. You all are tuned in to um, your, Tara and, 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 and Mike exactly. right now. This Sites is, this like is yours. great yeah, for you is. guys to be tuned because that, that shows that you're trying to learn. You're trying so to true. figure this thing out. So you got to continue to do that. You got to continue to seek the information through books, through videos, through podcasts and continue to take these lessons that you're learning and put them into action and you become... You become a, 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 a savant, so to speak. Yeah. Like people in your circle will start to ask you, like, you know, I see you guys. Yeah. I see you guys are making progress. Right. So, like, like, you know, tell me what's going on. You at first they're just gonna just kind of look and snicker and say, "Are you sure you guys want to do <laughs> this?" Totally right. and, then, and then give them about a year. They're gonna be like, "So, how did you guys do this?" Yeah. You know, the conversation will totally change, but it's all gonna be based on your ability to allow yourself to continue to grow, to continue to better. Don't get stuck in the past and what happened. You can't arrive at your destiny by constantly looking in the rearview mirror. You got to always be looking forward and trying to get to that final destination. Yeah, and so that's what we would do. We would read and um, 
I would send him emails and he would send me emails and we would print out different posts and different articles on sites that we found and we would talk about it later over dinner on our TV, with our TV nights, you know, our night stands, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And we would talk about what we learned, you know, uh, maybe it was a, a new saving strategy or something like that or a story of how someone was able to get out of debt. We continuously always always learn as much as possible mm -hmm. and that and we still do it to this day because that's what keeps still us going yeah and it's very inspirational it really really yeah. is and you know when you say education you're not talking about going out back no. to college no. into more no. debt we're talking we're you to about, go to the library go to the library exactly. <laughs> thank you because no. people get that See, impression i like the library not, not even the no. bookstore it's, yeah, the library. it's the library all of our library. stuff everything that we that we were able to learn from it was free we didn't go pay to anybody the library. for it and it's the best place on the planet best. earth they yeah. got books they got cds they got dvds they got ebooks our 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 library lets you rent uh um oh. macbooks wow. wow like macbooks i mean you can't leave yeah. You, got, you, got to use, right. you got to use it there, yeah. but you get to use it. You, you can do your research. You can write your papers. You can serve whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? Like the library is the place to yeah. be. Yeah, and there's an app on our phone that we're able to use our library card there and rent out audio books yeah, right, they got it right from home. They so got it all. Education is available. That yeah, awesome. and it, it's amazing. Everybody says, I don't have the time. You know what? You can get the audio book and listen on your way to work. Or if you're a stay-at-home mom, Listen yeah. on the way back from taking the kids to school or whatever. Go. Going to the grocery store. You know, you can always have those few minutes where you can learn something more. And Instead of playing the game on your phone, <laughs> listen mm -hmm. to something or read something. Yeah, your phone, you know. Your phone is amazing because now they have apps where you can listen to audiobooks via your phone. Exactly. Via your library. But they're not just on CDs now. You can do right. it on your, on your smart devices as well. Right. Yeah, so you don't have to waste time playing games. You could actually do something productive, you know? Exactly, and, you exactly. You know, that kind of thing. Well, I actually thought it was uh, one point I didn't want to miss here uh, is that you were talking about taking responsibility. I mean, I mean, you didn't actually say this, but you were. I think you were sort of saying, you know, take responsibility for it and say, I really, I kind of messed up and now I'm not going to do that anymore. Because if, if you are thinking it's somebody else's fault or these things are happening to me, then you can't fix it because it's not your problem. Mm -hmm. But if you admit, you know, hey, we kind of messed up here. We need to fix this. It we've makes had it so people, much We've work. had people kind of, you know, throw off and say things like, well, they shouldn't have gave me the student loan. They knew I couldn't pay it back. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Yeah. Right. I think that was your name that you signed at the bottom of those documents. Yeah. So you got to take ownership. Like, if you have the mentality like somebody did it to you, there's there's no way you're gonna you're gonna get to the place that you're trying to get. It starts with you taking ownership. There you you have a part that you played in this. Now maybe you started out with some extreme circumstances. You came from poverty and this was your only way out. This is your only way to get to school. Got it. But look, let's get it done. Yeah. Let's get out of. Bed. Let's make it happen. Yeah, right. definitely. Yeah, and you know that's the way. <laughs> I, I had this huge thing with college debt. I just hate college debt. We just have so many friends and neighbors. They've got $200,000 in college debt, and they're working for UPS, or they're yeah. working yeah. as a pizza delivery guy. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. like, are you serious? Yeah. And so, you know, I, I really want to encourage people, if you're going to go to school, make sure you know what you're going for. And yeah. Don't borrow. Don't. We, really, we don't, we don't advocate borrowing at all. Mm -hmm. But certainly don't borrow any more than you would yeah. need to. If right. You, you know, start at the community college if you need to, and then go to the four-year if you need to finish or whatever. But go the absolute cheapest route. There are always ways to save on oh, things sure. like that, you know. Um, so I'm just curious, what was the thing you missed most when you started changing your mindset on spending? And was there something that you really missed most, or did you not miss anything? No, I missed it all. I'm not going to sit here and lie. <laughs> I missed it all. But again, it goes back to we had to clearly define why. Yeah. I knew why I was doing it. You know, but it was hard. I was used to going to the mall every couple of weeks and seeing what was out. Shoes, clothes, jewelry. I was used to, you know, every time my favorite artist CD came out, I just go get it. You know, I was used to it. It was it was what I did. Yeah. And so when it was time for me to 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 get things in order, I knew that what I was doing was leading me to a place that I didn't yeah. want to end up. Yeah. And so I knew that there was a different destination that I wanted to arrive at. And because there was a different destination that I was trying to arrive at, I needed to develop some different habits. You know, 
And so, so what are those different habits also, you developed? So for one, I stopped blowing money like CDs, for example. I could get them at the library and just listen to them. Or I can listen to them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Clothing, like you guys advocate. I can go to the thrift store and I can find some pretty nice stuff. Yeah. At first, I was like, thrift it. store? Yeah, you find some great things. And I ain't going to no thrift store. Do you know who I am? I am talent. <laughs> <laughs> talent don't go to the thrift store. <laughs> but then I went to a thrift store and I found some nice the stuff. The thrift store really has really for nice super men low prices. clothing. And yeah. so it was just a matter of shifting. And, and you know, once it, it's, like, it's like exercising. You know, if you if you put it in the work and you're even though it's uncomfortable, you're getting up early and you're sore. But if you start to see results, it helps you to keep going. Mm -hmm. exactly. Even though you're doing something different, even though you're uncomfortable, even though there's some discomfort in your body. When you start to see those results, it motivates you. It fuels you to keep going. It's the same thing here when it comes to your money. Yeah, you're developing. You're doing some different things as far as your spending habits. But when you start to see that debt decrease. When you start to see your stress level come down, when you start to see that you and your wife are communicating better, you're coming closer together, when you start to see results, the results outweigh the discomfort of you doing something different. Exactly. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the truth. People, people, when they're in that situation, they say, well, I just can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But once you get started, like we said, just start with 5 or $10, we've said. Mm -hmm. I don't, or even if you have a dollar, just put it on your debt. You will start seeing it, and then you get encouraged. And then when you go to the thrift store, you're like, man, what cool deal can I find today? Exactly. <laughs> you know? True. Exactly. That's exactly well, what happened. That is, I just, I don't know. I love your tips. They are so great. Can you tell us a little bit more about your website and what you guys have on there? I've really been enjoying looking around, but I want you guys to give a little spiel you. on your website. Well, the website is hisandhermoney.com. That's the place to find us in all of our various different formats. We have an incredible podcast that's called The His and Her Money Show that you can find on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher Radio, as well as we're on YouTube at youtube.com slash hisandhermoney. But, of course, all those links are there at our website, hisandhermoney.com. And the content that we have there, it's all about debt freedom all about financial stewardship, all about building wealth, home management, all around just trying to improve you in your, in your personal finance and in your home management. We love talking about things like getting out of debt and building up your savings. And we also love talking about entrepreneurship because we feel that entrepreneurship is a great tool and an underutilized tool in your fight to financial freedom. And so we love to bring on people that have great tips on entrepreneurship or personal stories of going from rags to riches through a lot of hard work and transitioning out of the nine to five and into working, becoming self-employed. Because we just want to, at the end of the day, our goal is to inspire people yeah. to greatness. We want everybody that was here under the sound of our voice to know that they were created with a purpose and that we want you to achieve that purpose and that debt that's in your life is holding you back. So everything that we do, whether it's our YouTube channel, our podcast, or just on our website and written content, we just want to inspire you. And another way that we inspire people is we wrote a book called Money Talks, The Ultimate Couple's Guide to Communicating About Money. And our heart behind that was we know that so many people, marriages are falling apart all around personal finance and money fights. And so a lot of people just don't know how to talk about money. Those conversations are tough because anytime you talk about money, it becomes emotional because finance is emotional. And so we wrote a guide to just kind of help you through each part of personal finance that you need to talk about about at the end of each chapter we give you a talking point that you all should talk about and it helps to build up your knowledge base around each area of personal finance and so you can grab that at his and her money dot com as well again the book is called money talks the ultimate couple's guide to communicating about money and we'll be putting those links in the description below so just click on the description down there and we will have the links right there convenient for you so well thank you guys so much we've had a great time awesome having <laughs> thank you, you. Yeah. we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves this has been incredible we love yeah. it. we're gonna have to have you on again so thank you so much sure. anytime. anytime all right well, you guys have a good night we'll talk to you later thank all right. you good night good night <laughs>